Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. Those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance. When I went to law school, um, I often would say to the students, come with me and I'll show you the real Vermont. Hidden in the hollows, hidden uh, on the back roads, are the broken down tar paper shacks, mobile homes, where domestic violence occurs a, a lot. Domestic violence, sexual violence, alcoholism were all a part of, of my everyday life when I was growing up in rural Vermont. I had started to stop the generational cycle of abuse in my family and I wanted other people to have that happen in their families. That was when I came up with the idea for Half Justice Will Travel. I started serving clients out of my kitchen. I transported them to court, I connected them with the social services that they needed and it blossomed. It's part of our training today that we've been able to go from helping just a few people to helping thousands of people now. Free, all our services are free, uh, legal services, uh, also advocacy services, uh, transportation to and from court. The biggest value that I took away from the Equal Justice Works Fellowship was to know that they had faith in me that I could do this. I have a, a dream that Have Justice Will Travel would branch out nationwide. One person asked me, well, how are you going to replicate Have Justice Will Travel? There's just only one Winona. And I said, oh, no, you're wrong. There's lots of Winonas out there that want to do this. When I started in El Centro, California, I was earning $300 a month, and I was sleeping in the office and taking showers at the Salvation Army. And that was fine with me, <laughs> because the work was so compelling. It was just incredible to be so integrated and live with the community that I was working and serving. We trained Mexican and Guatemalan indigenous farm workers as interpreters, and we created with Migrant Education a specialized program of tutorials for farm worker kids. And then finally, we created employment opportunities for uh, women farm workers to be licensed child care providers. I was given a lot of responsibility without a lot of supervision, so you end up learning how to do it hands-on, and you know you learn how to be creative and innovative and bring people together. So I think it provided me with kind of an ethos of tenacity for the work that I do, and that I won't take no for an answer. You know, everything is possible. I have a lot of people who tell me, including within the firm, that I have the dream job within the legal community. It's a two-part test that we use at Holland and Knight for the pro bono projects that I work on, whether it is impossible and beautiful. The variety of the work that I do is what keeps me sane. I go from working with politicians to working with the most indigent and forsaken refugees in countries abroad, to working with corporations, to working with celebrities, to... So it's, it's always exciting and always inspiring. It's not what public interest can offer you, it's what you can offer public interest and what you can offer the cause and constituencies you want to serve. When you are engaged in social justice work, in large part you're motivated by the clients and you're motivated by the issues. I got interested in um, police misconduct and, and constitutional law. It all just sort of went from there. What Equal Justice Works provides is this opportunity to actually engage in this work, to do incredible projects. The California Youth Authority wasn't intended to be a prison for children. It was intended to be a rehabilitation center and a reform center for young people. And actually, a few years after my fellowship, there was a fairly large lawsuit filed against California um, Youth Authority for abuses in the system. 
Equal Justice Works created a community of fellows and we were connected to these public interest groups all over the country and it, and it literally was this sense that we weren't alone in this. So this is what I think of as the role of a lawyer and you as emerging lawyers this semester. I love working with current law students and I love being at a place like the Law Center where there's an intersection between education and service. You have law students who are coming in energized and excited and ready to go with new ideas. And I do know that if we just keep doing this and teaching the next generation to believe in social justice as part of their mission, that that will continue to perpetuate until it actually just becomes part of the culture of lawyers. I think Equal Justice Works is vital to the public interest movement. It's central to the public interest movement. I mean, they've transformed legal services through the fellowship model. They take that student and they say, okay, we're going to bet on you, and we're going to drop you into that water like you would a pebble, and the ripples go out and go out and grow and expand, and that's what Equal Justice Works does, is they start those ripples going.